Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alan Carlton, and I head up interdigital wireless R&D activities in Europe. It is my great pleasure to be here today to present some of Interdigital's high-level thoughts on what is next for wireless on the long road to 6G. But to start with, I would like to give you just a little bit of background on Interdigital. You may be familiar with us, but over the, the last year or two, we have grown quite significantly. Interdigital is perhaps best known as a wireless R&D organization. This remains very true today here, today. Here, our interests remain very broad, covering all aspects of 5G and what is becoming increasingly referred to as beyond 5G. Video technology, a, uh, as, or as we prefer, a, uh, visual processing technology has also been an area that we've had a long interest in, but historically a much uh, reduced relative level. This is, however, no longer true. With the acquisition and merger of the RNI division of Technicolor, we are now very much a wireless networking and visual processing organization. Internally, we like to joke that prior to this acquisition, we were in the business of solving the future problems of wireless, but today we're also very much in the business of creating those problems too. Joking aside, this merger really does provide us with something of a unique perspective and all of the intertwined roadmaps that certainly go beyond wireless, but will inevitably shape what we will be required to support as a wireless industry in the future. One of the first questions I always get asked on the topic of 6G is what is going on and where are all the ideas for it cooking? The simple answer on this, there is quite a lot going on. A standards discussion is still you know, quite a ways away, but the industrial research and consensus building phase is in full swing, just like it was back in 2010 uh, for 5G. Interdigital is involved in a number of areas, including some quite futuristic collaborative projects in the terahertz space and other areas, but also involved in a number of ecosystem thought leadership activities like 6G flagship uh, in Europe and uh, the Power and ATIS Next G Alliance initiatives in the United States. We see all of these as consensus driving initiatives that in time will serve to shape the definition of 6G and the requirements the industry will agree that will drive it. So what do we need to get to an XG? I have been working in the wireless space uh, since 2G. And like some of you, I'm sure I have lived and worked through the inflection points across three generations now. Every generation change has roughly shaped up the same way. And at this time, we see no good reason as to why 6G when it comes will be any different. Every new generation requires three essential ingredients, something new, as in a new service of some sorts, something broken in the sense that the prevailing generation can no longer efficiently support the new requirements, and critically, more of the same, insofar as the new generation must make the core services of the previous generation work much better. I do not think any generational switch characterizes this more than going from 4G to 5G. Much has been talked about the three so-called services in 5G, but you know, of course they are EMBB, URLLC and uh, massive machine type communications. But we had mobile broadband in 4G and 5G is certainly bringing more to this. 4G also certainly opened the door to machine type communications, but let's be fair, this door was opened in 2G, but it just took us to 4G to embrace it with the invention of the myriad of IoT radios that have, defined, that have been defined over the last decade. So similarly, it is fair to say 5G is bringing much more to machine type communications. Seen through this lens, the only thing that is really genuinely new in 5G, in my opinion, is what will be delivered under the service umbrella that is the URLLC the label. In terms of what was broken in 4G, evidence suggests that it was not really the radio. OFDM is still here and will quite possibly persevere into 6G too, at least in the lower bands and some new flavors perhaps. The broken bit in 4G was in fact the general overall system architecture. This was the real issue, as it was simply not flexible enough to evolve much further under the weight of the growing service requirements. We expect the beyond 5G to 6G path to shape up in a similar way. 
From the 10,000 feet, this is how we see it. B5G, 6G will be required to reach a much wider set of use cases and market diversities. We're already seeing the beginnings of this with features like uh, NR Lite and Release 17. Without going into it, this feature addresses the use case uh, that does not a use case that does not fit neatly and tidily at one of the vertices of our classical 5G use case pyramid. We expect to see a lot more of this, and we expect to expect this to push the real flexibility capabilities of 5G over time. As I will get into a little bit in the next few slides, 5G simply won't support the real extreme requirements of many of the use cases that it will simply open the door to. In terms of a new service, all I will say is we do not expect it to be so new that it will emerge to enable some new or much improved convergence of our physical and virtual worlds. This will likely begin in 5G, but it will only be achieved at a true immersive scale in 6G. In this way, the service may be perceived as new to the consumer. At Interdigital, we have referred to this convergence of the physical and virtual world as creating a living network for the last 10 years. 5G will certainly be a major step on the latter stages of this roadmap. And looking forward, the convergence of wireless with other technologies such as AI, ML, will be key to completing this vision. But it will probably take to a 6G to deliver it at true scale. Again, this is not terribly different than the relationship 4G had with 3G. When looking at emerging use cases, we see five principal categories driving evolving wireless requirements. The first takeaway is perhaps that these use cases look very familiar. After all, didn't 5G promise all of these? The real takeaway on these use cases, however, should be, these, that, should be that these one-liners that we have all seen splash so many times in front of us in different forms sometimes can see long and rich roadmaps in themselves, some of which will only be scratched by what 5G brings to the table. If we look just a little deeper at one of these use cases, multi-sensory extended reality, XR for short, it becomes clear just how complex these independent roadmaps are. In our view, XR is certainly the leading contender for the next personal mobile compute platform with smartphone-like evolution potential. And we certainly need it to shake up the smartphone, for, the smartphone form factor just a little bit. The challenges on this roadmap are, however, immense and have dependencies that go well beyond wireless and visual processing, suggesting that there will be many point product releases here over the next 10 years. One thing is clear, however, that the specified 5G average user experience data rate of 100 megabits per second downlink and 50 megabits per second uplink will need to grow quite significantly, possibly an order of magnitude or more in order, in order to deliver the perfect immersive experience at truly significant scale. This roadmap requirement justification alone may take us to a 6G. The XR use case is certainly not the only requirements roadmap that will push uh, 5G. We have examined the extremes of the other use cases and this heat map shows just highlights and shows just how 5G will be pushed across a range of KPI over the next 10 years. Some may be addressed to some extent in 5G, but it would appear more likely that we'll need, we will need some new generational shift to satisfy them all over the longer term. Looking now to some of the emerging technologies, uh, solutions to these challenges on the wireless roadmap, I want to just highlight a few that we see that we see a, uh, that we see that we see the potential over the longer term to challenge the status quo of 5G and possibly create inflection or breakpoints that might take us to a sixth generation. There are certainly others too, but these five are the ones that I would put my money on today. I do not think any one of these will do it by themselves, but again, as history tells us, it is generally an accumulation of many factors that is required to create a generational shift. And more, it is how the fusions of these individual roadmaps play out together that actually shape what the future eventually turns out to be. 
The first one is what would seem like the inevitable and somewhat obvious push into ever higher spectrum bands and new sharing models. This push today is perhaps most interestingly highlighted in 3GPP with the embrace there of an exploration of spectrum above 72 gigahertz. This is something that five years ago would have been thought impossible on a forum like 3GPP. If we continue this trend line as would seem inevitable, then fundamental problems start to appear with digital design and OFDM methods above 100 gigahertz. While I would think OFDM, or maybe a close, perhaps a bit more energy sensitive cousin, is safe but not necessarily certain in lower bands. As we move into higher bands, we will certainly need to move to a simpler waveform to account for the many challenges that exist there in RF circuit design. Altogether, this might create an inflection point in 5G sometime in the future. Another perhaps obvious one, on the surface at least, is wireless AI fusion. There's a lot of hype around this area now. But I think the application era we are living in today is much more about finding out where these fusions don't make sense as it is about where they do make sense. The focus today is really in higher level network functions, but this will push a lot deeper into the RAN and later into the design of future radios. Not least of all, AIML <coughs> may provide the solution to the non-linearity challenges in the terahertz systems I just mentioned. Over the long term, as our nodes all become more intelligent, then this might lead us to whole new approaches to protocol and radio interface design. I doubt it will ever replace traditional design, but this impact could prove significant in time to create another significant inflection point in 5G. Another hot topic is reconfigurable intelligent metasurfaces. There has been great progress here from a core technology perspective. This interests me less than the longer term potential that lies here to inject a whole new node into the wireless system, revolutioning, revolutionizing how we might view the channel in the future. This could be a final frontier in network softwareization turning the radio channel into a software programmable entity too. Progress here may shake up traditional RAN design in the future, creating another possible architectural inflection point. We will see in time. At number four, we see another paradigm shift gradually emerging that is from our devices simply being wireless information transfer devices to being generally wireless information and power transfer devices. This is all part of what we are seeing as a more holistic approach to spectral and energy efficiency driven design emerging. While this is unlikely to drive a new generation shift by itself, it is another element when compounded with the rest that could over the longer term have significant impact to the design of the elemental blocks in the air interface. The last one is interesting and is one I would say I'm personally most immersed in, in various ways. If I were to describe 5G in one simple abstraction, it would be that it is the convergence of telecom with IT. And this is all embraced by this virtualization to cloud native, edge native roadmap. However, the billion dollar question is just how far will we go in this journey in 5G? We've made good progress in the core network with a service-based architecture approach that has been embraced, but is arguably somewhat stalled uh, at the moment. We're making good progress in the RAN through what seems like countless industry initiatives, but not everyone, everyone is 100% on board and nothing in any of them is what I would call cloud native quite yet. For all the talk of network slicing, there is really no such thing as a true end-to-end -end network slice yet that spans the core, the RAN, spectrum, and device. There are truly big innovation opportunities here, but the technology barriers may be small compared to the business model, regulatory, and IPR barriers we need to get through first that will allow all the technology innovation that is possible here to come through. In my opinion, it might take the entirety of 5G to work through all of these. And as an, indus as an industry, we may need a 6G to go all the way technologically here because of it. So in terms of some takeaways, 
Today, we are certainly very much in the early stages of the rollout of 5G. And we do still have a very long way to go with the evolution of this technology. So none of us should be getting overly excited yet about the prospect of 6G. Still an awful lot of work to be done in 5G. That said, now is historically the right time to be asking what is next. And it is fair to say that the path ahead of us appears to be quite rich. The emerging use cases for beyond 5G, 6G may seem quite familiar, but hide a truth that 5G may only open the door to these roadmaps. Extreme requirements will continue to push the evolution of wireless well beyond 5G and in time will enable a new service experience. Looking out to the future and the promising tech trend lines, it does appear that there will be inflection points, breakpoints in the future that may drive us uh, to needing to develop a next generation 6G uh, technology standard. Finally, I just want to let you know about a new resource in the space of 6G that you might find interesting. Last month, Interdigital, in partnership with Northeastern University uh, in the US, hosted a virtual 6G symposium event under the independent brand of 6G World. The associated website now is now live and uh, the plan going forward in addition to 6G event planning is to track everything 6G over the next 10 years. So please drop by and take a look sometime. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.